a very good morning dear students and welcome to today's session today's session is a continuation of our last class where you were introduced to george orwell the order of animal farm and in today's class we'll focus on animal farm and i'll be introducing uh, the characters of animal farm to you animal farm as i mentioned in the last class is an allegory is a satire and a fable and this was given as an assignment to you uh, and some of you have submitted the assignment others who haven't submitted yet kindly make it fast anyhow i'll be explaining the three different uh, terms to you first we have allegory what is allegory allegory is any narrative in verse or prose in which the agent's action or the setting as well has two levels or two layers of meaning the surface level meaning and the under the surface level meaning and there are basically two types of allegory first is historical or political allegory and second is allegory of ideas an animal farm is a political allegory because the characters and actions represent or allegorize historical personages and events and we know animal farm the characters uh, and the events they represent historical personages of the russian revolution hope you remember the discussion we had on russian revolution in the last class so animal farm is an allegorical novel and it is a political allegory now animal farm as a satire what is a satire satire is the literary art of diminishing or derogating a subject by making it ridiculous or evoking towards it attitudes of amusement scorn or contempt and animal farm is a political satire because it is a satire on totalitarianism in general and especially that of Uh, the stalinist russia it is also considered as a fable an animal fable so what is a fable a fable is a short narration a short narrative in verse or prose that exemplifies an abstract moral thesis or principle of human behavior and the most common form of fable is beast fable or animal fable in which the animals they talk and act like humans and the uh, uh, familiar fable for us one is uh, the fables of aesop or the fable of the fox and the grape or the panchatantra tales in all these we find animals as characters animals behaving and acting like human and at the end of uh, this fable a particular moral principle is derived at and uh, once uh, orwell was asked uh, why he wrote about animals or how he came to write animal farm and he said that he once saw a little boy whipping a horse and that particular scene made him write this in his own words it struck me that if only such animals became aware of their strength we should have no power over them and that men exploit animals in much the same way as the rich exploit the proletariat so this is one of the reasons why he made animals as his characters in the novel animal farm yes now uh, before we move into the story of the novel we need to know the the characters so animal farm the story takes place uh, on a farm somewhere in england and we are presented to manor farm owned by mr jones mr jones is uh, presented as an irresponsible owner of the farm he uh, lets the animals starve and beats them with a whip and though sometimes at at times he shows random kindness but most times he uh, he he you know treats them 
very um, cruelly and uh, he is also presented as a drunkard too so this is mr jones and his manor farm now moving on to the uh, major characters the first major character that we have is that of old major because uh, the action of the novel begins when this oldest pig of the farm old major calls all the animals for a secret meeting and this uh, in this secret meeting he tells them of a dream that he had uh, a dream of revolution and he exhorts all the animals uh, to revolt against the tyranny of mr jones so that is old major and he is described as an old boar whose speech rouses the animals into rebellion and his philosophy is called animalism he teaches the animals the song of freedom that is beasts of england beasts of england is the national anthem of the animals at animal farm manor farm now eventually that will become animal farm so after all major comes snowball snowball uh, is a young boy who becomes one of the uh, rebellion's most valuable leader and snowball draws very complicated plans for the windmill and later uh, once uh, we move into the story we'll see what happens to uh, snowball and uh, the next uh, set of characters we have napoleon napoleon is uh, one of the leaders along with snowball napoleon uh, is again one of the valuable leaders of the rebellion and uh, he becomes a kind of scapegoat again uh, i don't want to reveal the story to you now so just keep in your mind that napoleon and snobel uh, were the two leaders of rebellion against mr jones so then comes squealer squealer is a, a poker pig who becomes napoleon's mouthpiece he uses his uh, ability to manipulate the animals uh, squealer uh, throughout the novel displays his ability to manipulate the animals thoughts uh, through the use of hollow yet convincing rhetoric and he uh, represents uh, one of the propaganda ministers of stalin also so that is squealer the propaganda uh, minister or the uh, mouthpiece of napoleon then comes boxer boxer is a very dedicated uh, horse a very uh, hard working horse who keeps believing that hard work solves all problems and uh, boxer represents the dedicated uh, but uh, the tricked supporters of stalin uh, the only motto of boxer is i will work harder whatever happens uh, the reply that boxer gives us i will work harder so that is boxer who's a representative of the uh, hard working proletariats then we have clover clover is a uh, motherly horse who takes care of boxer Uh, and uh, silently questions napoleon's decisions so uh, just to remember things i hope the first set of uh, important characters are clear to you first we have old major who is an old boar then comes noble uh, napoleon the two leaders squealer napoleon's mouthpiece the two houses boxer the hard working boxer and the motherly clover and here comes uh, another set of important characters uh, moses moses is a, a tamed raven and uh, this particular character spreads stories about a sugar candy mountain a, a paradise called sugar candy mountain that exists nowhere 
and uh, this particular character is uh, created to uh, represent religion then comes molly molly is a hose uh, who prefers ribbons and sugar over ideas and rebellion she is too concerned about uh, her looks and uh, it's quite an interesting character uh, or the way orwell describes molly is really interesting uh, so that is molly then comes benjamin benjamin is a cynical pessimistic donkey who continually um, you know undercuts the animal's enthusiasm he is a too cynical person who never even smiles that is how orwell describes benjamin then uh, yeah mr jones we have already seen him and his wife is also there mrs jones then we have uh the three dogs bluebell jessie and pinch um these three dogs uh and their uh, puppies are quite important and when this particular novel was adapted into a film uh one of the dogs is actually the narrator when it was adapted into a film then we have a few uh you know human friends uh, or should i say enemies in animal farm mr pilkington mr wimper and mr frederick mr pilkington uh, is the owner of the foxwood farm which is a neighboring farm of manor farm uh, he uh, yeah the rest will deal with later then we have mr frederick uh, and the uh, an owner of a farm a neighboring farm by name pilking uh, pilkington sorry uh, uh pinchfield that is the name of the farm frederick owns so uh, remember these two people mr pilkington the owner of foxwood farm and mr frederick the owner of um uh, pinchfield farm and the third human character here is mr wimper Uh, Mr Wimper is a, a solicitor hired later by Napoleon uh, who acts as an intermediary between humans and animals so remember the three human characters Pilkington Frederick and Mr Wimper and other than these characters we have the ducks and the sheep they also play uh, a role in this particular novel so once again uh, let me just uh, brush up your memory regarding the important characters we have the manor farm owned by mr jones uh, the old pig old major snobble napoleon squealer boxer clover moses molly benjamin mrs jones bluebell jessie pincher and their puppies the humans mr pilkington mr frederick and mr wimpert so uh try to remember the names of these characters don't confuse them each character is significant as they all uh, represent one or the other historical uh, figures of stalinist russia now uh as i said uh, the story takes place in uh, manor farm uh, which is uh, from a third person perspective the action begins when the eldest pig old major calls for a meeting uh, where he uh, tells the other animals about a dream he had a dream of revolution and he exhorts all the animals to revolt against the tyranny of mr jones so his uh, the animals are enlightened by the speech of old major that they work out a theory of animalism uh this is the theory of animalism the seven commandments of animalism and they plan to chase mr jones off the farm uh this seven commandments of animalism is uh an interesting one have a look into that uh the first one first commandment whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy commandment 2 whatever goes upon four legs or has wings 
is a friend. Commandment 3. No animal shall wear clothes. Commandment 4. No animal shall sleep in a bed. 5. No animal shall drink alcohol. No animal shall kill any other animal. And the last one, all animals are equal. And the entire seven commandments uh, uh, were summarized into a single sentence that is written on top. Four legs good, two legs bad. This is animalism. So uh, here actually begins the story of animalism. And we are going to see what happened to uh, this principle of animalism. What happened to the animals, whether uh, they were successful in chasing Mr. Jones out of the farm uh, and what happened later. So with this, I wish to wind up today's session uh, as uh, it takes some time to, uh, you know, by heart the names of the characters. So don't forget that uh, from the next class onwards, we are going to deal with a novel and uh, for that, you need to memorize the names of the important characters. So, with this, uh, today's session ends. And thank you all for listening and watching. Thank you. Have a great day. See you in the next class.